Okay, today what we're looking at is the uh, <clears throat> second version of a bump and go drive. There were uh, at least three main versions of doing bump and go. Looks like it's got some uh, dirt crap from the floor under it. Well, straighten itself out there. See where it goes. The old mystery action. Um, in the past I've did uh, videos on the 1950s robot toys that actually used the first version of the bump and go drive <clears throat> and then I did a build video on how you could build your own doing that version now this is the second version this is the most common or we'll call it the classic bump and go drive and the first version let me shut this off on the first version the motor was actually in this wheel assembly on toys like Directional Robot and Buzzer Robot and even the earliest versions of Mr. Robot <clears throat> used in a lot of other toys that weren't robot related too. Those toys uh, having the motor built into this hub meant they could run the shaft up from that to turn the head so the head would be facing whichever way the wheels went. <clears throat> now the way these are going to work is both these wheels are locked together. Both these wheels are driving so it's always going to want to pull the back end of this like a trailer to match up to the front two wheels. Now when these hit something, it would just sit there and jam. The two wheels would just keep trying to grind into it. So on the ones that have the motors built into this hub, what they had to do is they had to put a slip clutch in one of the wheels. Now it could be a simple friction slip clutch or in the case of most of those toys, there was actually um, two plates with an indent on one, so normally a wheel would be locked into that indent, but then when it hit an object uh, and it's starting to bind up, the wheel would pop out of that indent, which means the other wheel is still driving, and that would turn it, so then it would go off in a new direction, and then the wheel would relock up, and everything would follow and it would go. This is the more classic version. <clears throat> where the motor stays bolted to the frame. In this case, I'm just using the standard uh, TT148 gear ratio motor. It's the most common. This happened to have been a dual shaft one. Single shaft one would work just as well. If you use this option, well, you could use this into the shaft to drive some other features in your, in your toy. Uh, files for this are going to be up on Thingiverse, but the long and the short of it is the output shaft of this motor comes down to a crown gear. The crown gear drives your regular pinion gear and that drives the two wheels so what makes this one not lock up when it hits something and to turn well what they did and this is the most common way is they have one wheel whose axle hole fits the shaft this wheel uh, doesn't have any play in it but this wheel over here they purposely made the shaft go in further so you can see how it can teeter-totter maybe if I hold it right see how that can teeter-totter <clears throat> So, when this bumps into something, that means this wheel can slip. If it's not bumping into something, both wheels driving, again, tend to pull the whole thing like a trailer behind it, and it goes off in that new direction. Um, what keeps pressure of this wheel that can go up in is you have a tripod. You've got these two wheels in the back of a fixed distance. You've got this wheel here that has no uh, slop play. So they form a tripod, and when you push on this one, I'll hold it this way and gravity will be our friend and when you push on this one the weight of the toy see how that's going to lift that other one so normally speaking there'll be pressure on both wheels and it's going to want to follow whichever direction this is going when it hits something this one can slip just enough that this wheel still driving can spin it and off it goes in a new direction that's how the most classic version of the bump and go goes now there's a third version of bump and go that Tommy uh, came up with uh, a common example of that would be like in Dingbot where instead of two wheels in the front there's actually one wheel that's uh, offset not only off center but at an angle that's a, a totally different animal and we can talk about that one in uh, future videos I will be doing a build video on this so if any of you want to do it that's fine I'm gonna have the files up on Thingiverse let me rotate the camera here and there are the 3D printed parts for making one of these and then the parts that aren't 3D printed like a couple of axles, a couple of screws, a rubber grommet, not a whole lot of stuff. Uh, got another TT motor here. This one 
is one that I'd cut the shaft off of a long time ago. Like I say, one of the most common versions of this is just the single shaft one. This is just what I had laying around. But uh, I'll be doing a build video on that real soon.